this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to bring these animations to your React Native apps with Reanimated. Our starting point is a simple chat UI without any animations whatsoever. It has a flat list with a bunch of messages and a bottom sheet opened with an icon in the top right corner. Inside our bottom sheet, we have a simple picker of the color of our messages. The sheet closes when a user taps on the backdrop. The app works exactly the same on Android as well. The project consists of four main files. We have the main app.js file that orchestrates the whole application and especially the logic of the bottom sheet, an accent picker, which is this part inside the sheet, a chat that creates the chat layout, and the message component, which is basically a single message. Honestly, it would be OK to ship this app, especially for our users on lower-end devices. But we could make it so much nicer for everyone else. I would start with this bottom sheet. Well, I'm not very fond of it, how it instantly appears and disappears on top. For animating components on appearance, you can make use of layout animations, which were created exactly for this purpose. You can click the video in this corner to check the full explanation of it. Reanimated comes with a bunch of predefined layout animations like fade in or slayed out, which you can customize or create your own ones from scratch. First, let's make our sheet an animated component and add an entering prop. For our bottom sheet, I think the best animation here would be sliding down. Let's see how it works here. Yeah, that's a bit better. I would also make it springified, but down, down a bit as well. Yeah, nice. Let's do the same for the exiting prop as well. Our bottom sheet already feels a lot nicer, but I think the backdrop could appear and disappear with a fade animation. For that, we need to make this pressable component animatable. To do this, we need to wrap the pressable with create animated component. And we'll use it exactly in the same place as we did with bare pressable. Let's add fade in as an entering prop and fade out as exiting. OK, yeah, that feels so much better. And it took like, I don't know, six lines of code? As I'm using the app, I think I'd also like the bottom sheet to be interactive with gestures. And that's also pretty simple to do. First, let's add a new shared value with the use shared value hook. Shared values are a driving factor of all the animations built with Reanimated. They also power the layout animations that we've just used a few seconds ago. We'll use the shared value to store the current offset of the bottom sheet in a Y axis. Let's connect the offset to the styles of the sheet with use animated style. In the callback, return the translate Y connected to the offset shared value. Don't forget to attach the return object to the rest of the styles. Now that's done, we need to somehow manipulate the offset of the bottom sheet. For that, we'll use a pan gesture. Create a new gesture pan in your component's body and assign it to a variable. In a chained onChange method, mutate the offset shared value with a plus equals change y. Next, wrap the bottom sheet with a gesture detector and pass the band gesture you've just created to the gesture prop. And there you go. The gesture is now bound to the translate white property. You know what? It would be kind of cool to have it spring back to its initial place when you let go of the gesture. And that's also very simple to do. Let's chain the onFinalize method and bring back the offset.value back to its initial place with, with spring. Yeah, there we go. What we should do next is to add a limit on how far the sheet could be overdragged in this direction. First, let's extract the change to a separate variable. I've called this variable offset delta. This value is positive when we are going that way and negative when going up. Simply add a condition whenever the offset is positive. If it is, then use it and make it 0 when it's negative. OK, that kind of does the trick, but it isn't very nice. So let's allow our users to go slightly beyond the hard 0 but clamp it at some value beyond that. I've already created a constant called overdrag, so let's just use it. As a cherry on top, make it springy as well. That's looking nice already, and the bottom sheet is pretty much finished. It's missing just one more feature. I would like you to have it close with a gesture. 
We can do this by slightly adjusting the code in the onFinalize method and make the use of our toggle sheet function when the pan gesture is, for example, in one third of the sheet. But wait, this is going to crash your app. Let me explain. These parts of the code are a bit special because they are executed a bit differently from the others. This code is actually sent over to be executed on a UI thread. It makes this code run very, very smoothly in a non-blocking way, but it has just one downside. You can't run code that isn't marked as a worklet. Most of the functions you use from reanimated or gesture handler are already marked with it, but React set state, or for example, anything React navigation related isn't. Luckily, we can send functions from the UI thread to be run back on the JS thread where your app logic lives. And it's very simple, actually. You just need to run the code with run on JS like that. And that will work just fine. Hmm, the sheet doesn't go back to its initial state when closed and opened again. Let's quickly fix this by resetting the offset in toggle sheet. And there you go. Let's also test the Android as well. And just like that, we've implemented a simple bottom sheet. For a fully fledged solution, I'd recommend using React Native bottom sheet. That's also powered by Reanimated, by the way. It comes with a bunch of life improvements like keyboard handling and integration with React Navigation. Next, let's animate change of a color. The basic idea is that we'd like to animate the change of a color one message after the other. To do this, let's first open the message component. This component gets a single message and the accent color from props. To animate messages sent by the user, we need to know the indices of messages that we can see on the screen. Then, based on that, we could delay animation of each message by some time interval. In a real-world application, we could have hundreds of thousands of messages in one chat. We would have to somehow get only the messages that are currently present on this screen. In this simplified example, we can just take all of the messages and simply filter the ones sent by the user. Then we can find the current index by comparing IDs of the current messages with the ones in that list. That way, the message component can know its current index. Before we animate the color, we need to change on how we store the accent in our app. Currently, it's stored in a React state, and Reanimated won't be able to animate that. We have to use a shared value instead. Let's change it here and here, and then we can go back to message and update these two values as well. To animate the background color, first, we need to make our message an animated view. Then we'll use the use animated style and return background color from the callback. To make it smoothly transition from one color to another, just use with timing. We'll use the with delay modifier to defer the start of an animation. Let's use 150 milliseconds times index. And don't forget to pass the animated style to the styles object. Let's do the same for the text, but make it just use either white or black color based on the darkness of the accent. I've prepared a simple helper function for this. And there you go. My name is Kasper, and I hope you learned something useful today. I work for Software Mention. We are the creators of React Native tools that you use every day, like Reanimated, Gesture Handler, and the native stack in React Navigation. We are a software agency specializing in React Native and multimedia streaming. We even have our own streaming framework called Membrane. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, tell us in the comments what you didn't like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See ya!